Why did you call so I could do but they um so I'm I'm just gonna give you guys a little um a little preview into my life and kind of how I got um you know into basketball and how we got to basically where I am at this point in my life. Um because I know a lot of people, you know, their parents have like different, you know, aspirations for the kid. Um, you know, to be especially if you're in, you know, in an Indian household um it's always a, a doctor lawyer you know engineer you know so what i took is a very um it's a different path you know not not a lot of people take um there's a lot of risk in it um but there's a lot of reward too so um i'll take you back to uh, basically how it all started um so basically um my father he played for the indian national team as captain um his name was Dilvinder Singh Gill um so, you know, basketball has always been on my in my blood. Um, I started playing when I was five, six years old. Um, at the time, I never really liked basketball because um, I have an older brother. So um, my father kind of always, you know, he was really focused on my brother, you know, training him because he's three years older than me. So uh, I was never really taken seriously. Um, you know, um, this, the, the older brother is always, you know, he's, he's a prodigy. So, you know, I kind of I kind of started through jealousy. Um, I, I, I just seen my dad training him and not training me. And I just started doing the drills by myself. Um, I really liked watching <clears throat> WWE, you know, wrestling was my big thing back then. Um, with all the, the superstars, uh, you know, with Stone Cold, Shawn Michaels. So I, I used to like, just love wrestling. And my, my dad, he forced like, you know, like watching me watching basketball games and, you know, like just being around the game. And I didn't like it, you know, until I seen like the little jealousy factor that me and my brother had. Um, so that kind of started my love. Like that just started the spark of me playing basketball. Um, and then it kind of just slowly, slowly, slowly just started growing into a passion of my own. Um, I just started very small. Um, I know everyone has these goals to you know, uh, make it to the NBA or, you know, um, they want to do this and this in their life. And which is great. You know, you should s strive for to be the best that you can be. But how I started it, I would just hit off little milestones that, you know, that would just help me just become better and, I, and better and better. And I would know that I'm on the right path or it, it's just something that I do want to do or continue doing. So I would just start off by, you know, all right, I need to make my local rep team that was my goal at that time um and that was and i was at seven eight years old so i didn't make my local rep team i made i wasn't good enough so i made uh what we call house league um it's just for players that you know that aren't at that level yet so i started um i started playing in house league and i slowly made my way up to playing you know uh, rep basketball um and that was for the local team. It was called Brampton Blue Devils. Um, so I played for them for two years. And just by being around people that are better than you, you just become better. You know, um, they always say, like, if you're the smartest person in the room, that room is probably not, not the greatest. You know, you need someone that's always challenging you. You need someone that's always, you know, better than you. Like, the, like you should not be the best player on your team always, you know, or other than that, you won't really be learning that. So that's how my um, my my growth became too. Like even when I made rep, I wasn't playing many minutes, but in practice, I was just chipping away at it and just becoming better and better because I was around better talent. Um, and then my biggest my biggest thing was making my uh, grade eight basketball team, which was um, like we had a very powerful stack school that I went to and. Um, there were a lot of players that went to the same school that maybe you guys have heard of. Um, the Sim Fuller, um, uh, Andrew Wiggins, um, uh, Anthony Bennett. So we all went to the same school, but I was older. Um, I was in eighth grade and these guys were in the seventh grade. So the competition was very, it, it was already at a, like a high level at that age. Um, so just being around those guys, 
you know, just, uh, just kind of, I just got better as well, you know? Um, and then when it was time to go to high school, everyone went to different, different schools. Um, uh, Wiggins went to Vaughn. Um, I went to a school called Ascension of Our Lord. Um, it's a Catholic school. And in Toronto, in the GTA, um, the Catholic schools are the, are the schools that are, you know, best for basketball. Um, at first, it was kind of difficult because me being a sick, um, going to a Catholic school, it was kind of, it was very, very weird at the time. Now, you just see it, everyone, everyone goes, uh, goes to school, like, you don't really question who goes where. But at that time, it was very, um, we didn't have many Indian kids in, like, in, in my school, probably a, a handful of maybe four or five. Um, so that was a kind of challenge on its own, just being, just being a sick in a school where, you know, it's a Catholic school. It's not a public school, you know, where you're, you're in a uniform, you know, you're, you're going to like their, their religious events, like mass. So you kind of question yourself, like what's going on? Like, you know, like, um, should I have gone to the school, you know, like, um, like does religion have to like play an effect on this? Do people look at you in, uh, in, a, in a different way? So going into the ninth grade, um, it was kind of, it was kind of a very challenging time uh, for me, especially. Um, but then what always remained the same was basketball. You know, uh, as long as you can put the ball in the basket, you'll make friends, you'll, you'll just feel more comfortable, you know. Um, so grade nine, going into grade nine, um, it was a very tough year. Um, go, uh, so on my, on my first year playing, I... I didn't play many minutes. I was actually coming off the bench. I was a sixth man, and um, we're off of a team where in grade eight we just won like our 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 regional championship because we had such like high caliber players. And now going into grade nine, you're you're like I'm the youngest guy on the team, so I'm playing with grade nine and grade tens. And then you're like, hey man, I'm not playing much. You kind of start questioning yourself, you know, but. At the same time, I was also playing rep basketball in the ninth grade. So that kind of kept me <clears throat> balanced because even though I wasn't playing in high school, I was playing on the rep team, you know, um, and I was playing for uh, Team Ontario at the time too. So throughout the, throughout the whole like year, I was just playing so much basketball. And it was funny because I was, I was playing for Team Ontario, which is a provincial team. I was playing on my rep basketball uh, team but I wasn't starting on my own high school team so it was, it was kind of frustrating because I knew that if I'm making all these teams I should be playing I should be starting on on my high school team but that wasn't the case whether I don't I don't know I still don't know until this day what what that was but you know there's life comes at you in so many ways where it, you know you question what you do a lot a lot in life you know so it was kind of frustrating, but, you know, I just talked with the process, you know, whatever, like, okay, I, this is just a little hump in the road. Um, going into grade 10, I had developed so much um, and like, it just expanded my game because I was just playing all year round, you know, and now in grade 10, okay, I'm, my body's changing and I'm lifting weights. You know, I started lifting weights kind of, kind of late. Um, because there was that little myth that was going around that uh, uh, if you lift weights too early, it's going to stunt your growth, which is a complete lie. Um, so if you kids start early, man, um, that was that was something that was told to me that it's a complete myth because um, your growth has it's all genetics, you know. It, it, like weights are not going to stunt your growth. Like I'm I'm six feet seven inches right now. If if I started lifting earlier, would I have been like what six five six four? I don't believe it. Right. Um, going to grade ten, my it was kind of a difficult year. Um, um, my my dad had passed away, uh, you know, and I was 13, 14, um, you know, just losing my dad. So it was a very it's very going into that year because he passed away in the summertime. It was very it was a very tough time for me mentally. Um, I kind of. Uh, I kind of gave up on school a little bit. Um, you know, uh, I, I stopped attending class. Uh, I was just in a, I was just in a zone where, uh, like, I didn't know, I didn't know how, how life was without having, you know, without having your dad. So 
I was going through a lot because my dad was a huge, huge influence in my life. And, um, you know, I was all, like, everyone, I feel like everyone's a mom, mama's boy, but um, I was both, you know, um, and it was very tough just losing that, that, that figure in my life. Um, and just kind of just like, it was very hard to move on. And school had an effect because I stopped going to class. So my 10th grade year, I only got, um, I only passed three classes, um, you know, which was now that you look at it, it's kind of um, very stupid on my part to, to, to not to go to class or let something that like, like that affect me. But at the end of the day, you know, life hits you and again, it hits you in waves. And that was a little hump in my life. Um, maybe, you know, if I did, if I did go to class, if I did something, you know, maybe that whole shift, like I would be somewhere else in my life, you know, you always question yourself like that. You know, if I, if I did this, you know, um, if I didn't make the team, what, where would I be at? So, you know, if you take, you know, one little thing out of someone else's life, I feel like, you know, the whole, like that person's life is totally changing. So for me, that was a, that was a tough time to get, um, get, get past um, my great. I, I just stopped falling in love with the game as well. Um, I didn't play much that year. Um, I was only playing high school basketball, but I kind of quit playing team Ontario and, um, and, and in my rep team. Um, and then kind of, you know, life went on my next year, grade 11. Uh, I, 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 I just had a switch in my, in my mind and just kind of wanted to, you know, start playing again, start. I just, I just wanted someone to be like, I just wanted my dad to kind of, you know, just be proud of me. You know, like I felt like if, if I would have quit so early, um, he kind of would have been disappointed. Um, so it was kind of just started my new love of playing was I, hey, I'm going to play for my, for my dad. You know, I, I had that, uh, I found my reason why, you know, everyone has a, has a why, you know, why do you do this? Why do you do that? So I, I had found that and it kind of gave me another spark and I was just zoned in. So I was, I was so focused on what I was doing. Um, hand in hand, I started going to class, um, started actually paying attention, started, because I knew if I wanted to go, my goal was to, hey, I want to play college basketball um, in the States. So I wanted to play NCAA basketball. I'm like, hey, what are the requirements? You know, so I started doing my homework at like in grade 11 very early. Um, <clears throat> should have done it a little earlier, but, you know, it's okay. Um, I had no one to kind of guide me because no one had taken that step to go, you know, go to the, go to the States and go play basketball. That wasn't, that wasn't a thing yet, you know, and the people that had done it before, I didn't know who they were. So they weren't really going to reach out to me and kind of be like, Hey man, like this is the way to do it. So I was kind of like a first kind of pop, pop, like pioneer and I was doing things myself. Um, so I, because no one had, no one had the time to kind of like teach me or like what to do, what are the requirements. So my coach kind of helped me, which is a huge, huge thing that, that someone could do like just out of, you know, just out of, out of love um my coach was he's like a father figure to me till this day um i call him because uh you know there's a lot of people that help you in your life and he was a big 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 part of that um so he sat me down and he told me what i needed what are the requirements and i started um you know started taking those classes in high school that i needed um to go through the the ncaa um the, the requirements the clearinghouse um my senior year in high school, uh, we won the, the, the regional championship. Um, I, uh, I got my banner hang, uh, hung up at my school. Um, actually, I'm getting it uh, presented to me this year. Um, so going back to high school, they're going to put a banner up. But uh, um, it, it's, kind of a, it's kind of a great journey because who you are in high school is – who you think you are in high school at that time is uh, it's really funny because, you know, at, at that point you think everything is at the, like at the end of the world. Like you know, like you think that that point in your life is like, oh my god, like you know, like this is like life or death, man. This is I need to get through this or you know this and that. But it's such when you get older, you, you look at that thing that you had would would was such sort of a small problem. It was so small. Like you know, you have you'll have such bigger problems in life. But high school at that time. 
you know, like you think everything is the end of the world. And same thing for me, you know, playing, you know, um, playing basketball at a high level. I'm like, okay, man, like I'm the man, like I got to do this. Like, you know, like you have that rep that you want to, you, you want to be that, you know, superstar, that cool guy. But <clears throat> now if I look back at it, like, I don't think I would have, you know, I, I don't think I needed to do certain things that I did, that I did in high school, you know, if I just would have kept on going just being a regular guy in high school because everyone everyone's trying to be someone that they're not in high school you know um so I think like that was that was the one thing that I was trying to get over to because now like I'm uh like a like a superstar in my region and everybody knows who I am but now the complications that I'm having is I'm not eligible to go play NCAA um I can't play college basketball because of my grades and that was strictly because of my grade 10 year. Um, I didn't, I didn't pass many classes because I was in my own little funk with my dad. So it was, um, that was, that was a um, kind of like a turning point in my career too. Because I'm like, hey man, if I can't play college basketball, um, like what am I gonna do? Yeah, I could have played locally. I could have played for the University of Toronto. I could have played, but like that was just like I just thought, you know, like. That was uh I was un- I was under under selling myself you know like I was I knew I was better than that you know and I I just thought like hey, if I went locally you know I don't know where I would be um and you know no disrespect to anybody that has played college basketball here but that just wasn't one of my goals you know so um it was a t- it was tough because I didn't know what to do at that point um you know so what I did was I went back for a half a semester of high school which we call the post-grad um, for, or we call it 50 year. So I took, um, so I took summer school and I took, uh, I went back for uh, a half a semester and I got my credits that I needed. Um, and the bad part was at the same time was randomly, I had gotten um, a blood clot in my leg. Um, so I had a, so I had a, uh, so I had an injury in my leg, um, which I didn't even know about. Uh, my leg was just hurting because I was just playing. I was traveling so much and I was playing and sitting in such tight spaces like in vans and in airplanes. And, you know, I, I wasn't getting enough blood flow in my leg. And I I had a blood clot, which I didn't know about. And it slowly, slowly went up to my kidney. Um, and I just kind of went in just in time. He said if it would have reached my heart, maybe I wouldn't have been, have been here today. But um, luckily... Luckily, I I, uh, I went at the right time because I knew something was wrong with my body, and I was in the hospital for I would say like two months. Uh, I had lost a lot of weight. Um, I couldn't walk. Um, I had to learn how to walk again. So I took that whole year off of school um, because you know I was just going through some medical stuff. And now on top of that, I'm sitting in the hospital. I can't walk. I can't play. And I can't, I don't have a school to go to. So I'm just sitting there, just kind of just questioning life. Like, what do I do? Do I keep going? Um, do, I, do I keep on pursuing basketball? Or do I kind of just start like the academic route? Like, do I, you know, get a degree in business or, you know, go into maybe being a lawyer? Um, that was very challenging for me, but I had such a good, like, foundation, like a great group of friends that, uh, again, they just picked me up always when I'm down, um, got me in the driver's seat again, started learning how to, you know, like walk again, run again, um, lifting weights. Um, and then I just kind of went on my own little zone. I, what I did was I put a map up of the United States and I <clears throat> started calling schools that I, in what region I wanted to go to. And I just started putting at a big, big old bulletin board and I started putting pins on. Like, hey, I want to play in Chicago. I want to play in Florida. And I just started, like, pinpointing all these schools. And I literally got on the phone, and I just started calling people. I'm like, hey, do you guys need a player? Um, you know, I can come try out. Hey, do you guys need a player? Um, I can come try out. I started making my mixtapes. Um, I used to set up – I used to go to my local L.A. fitness early in the morning before um, anyone could come. And – to start making these videos of me shooting, me running, me practicing. And I started burning those out and I started handing them out to school. Um, I sent out probably maybe 300 to 400 tapes. Um, 
everywhere across America. Um, because again, that was my goal, you know. Um, if you look at the people these days, everybody wants to play. Everybody wants to, you know, hey, I want to make it to every, I want to do this. But normally wants to take action. No one wants to, you know, do their own homework and, you know, get on the ground and actually do the dirty work. You know, everyone has these high dream, high aspirations, when they have these big dreams of doing things. But at the end of the day, you have to get your hands dirty and no one's going to give you your dream on a platter. You got to, you know, you got to work for it. You got to, you got to plan for it. Like, you know, like this isn't, it's not a, it's not a, it doesn't happen overnight. You know, um, everyone says like, oh, it's an overnight success. Now, my overnight success is it's been 12 years that I've been, that I've been working on, you know, working on my, on my craft, you know, um, but that, that's what I wanted to do. Um, so I did it. Um, I just started getting calls back. Hey, um, you know, we, we, we don't have a player or, or our player didn't uh, show up or, you know, this and that. So I just started now, I'm now randomly, I'm getting these calls back and now I'm having like five, six schools where I can, where I can, you know, where I could choose from and where I wanted to go. So because I wasn't eligible for the NCAA, I had to go through the junior college route. Um, so I wasn't eligible academically. So what, what that means is I had to play uh, two years of uh, junior college basketball before I can go into the NCAA. So I knew I had to go play two years of junior college. So I'm like, okay, let's pick the best junior college that, I, that, that is an area or like wherever I wanted to play. And that school happened to be Moberly Area Community College, which was in the middle of nowhere in Missouri. So where I'm from in Brampton, Toronto, there are a lot of people. Um, you know, there's, there's a lot of people that look like me. There's I felt very comfortable. But now I'm going into this place where um, there's I'm the only person that, that looks like me. Um, and at this time, I my hair is cut. Uh, I have like a very small, um, you know, like, um, like my beard um, and I have very like, you know, curly hair. Um, so I look, kind of look Mexican. Um, and that's what the people started calling me at because they, they didn't know what Indian was. So they started calling me Mexican, um, Arabic. Um, they thought I was Muslim, you know. So a lot of, um, a lot of different, different uh it was, it was a different environment to walk into, you know, coming coming from where I'm coming from and where I'm going is totally different. Um, everybody that was working was like, you know, like my teachers, everyone, everyone was was uh, Caucasian. They were, they were white, you know, um, and all the players, uh, there was one Indian guy and they're all, they were all black. So it was a very, it's very different to, to walk into, you know, um, because I just didn't feel comfortable, you know, because it wasn't a, uh, like I'm in a place, I'm very far away from home um, and no one looks like me. I have no friends, no one talks to. So your team has become your friends. Like, you know, so it was a very, it was a very strange, strange, uh, strange spot to be in for me. Um, and what happened was uh, my fourth game, I broke my nose. So this is the third time I've broke, broken my nose at this point. And this, at this point, you know, I think like, all right, it's just going to heal on its own. So they, they suggested that I need surgery. Um, so I did the surgery and it was maybe a week and a half after my surgery. Uh, we're playing the number one country, uh, the school in the country called Indian Hills. And my coach, he wanted me to play, um, which is very strange because he knew I had surgery. Um, so I, I told him, Hey, like, I, I honestly, I don't think I'll be helping the team if I play. Um, you know, I, I think I should kind of rest. So what happened was he thought that I was too soft. Um, he labeled me as a, as a soft player. Cause I didn't want to, I didn't want to, you know, give one for the team and, you know, but at the end of the day, I had to look out for myself and my health and I thought I wasn't ready. So where I went from starting on that team, I did not play for the rest of the year like at all because he thought I was selfish and he thought um, that I should have played. And for him, he wanted me to play because he thought I was a good, he thought I was a good player and he thought I could help the team. Um, so he, re he really wasn't looking out for my health. He was just 
it was looking out for, hey, we need to get this win. Um, which happens a lot in sports. Um, you know, coaches do do that. Um, but you have to look at it after yourself. And that's what I did. Um, so my first year, I played literally maybe eight games. And I didn't play for the rest of the, like, 20-something games. And that was my first year of college. Um, very disappointing. Um, kind of sucked because I had very high hopes going into school. Um, but again, it's another wave. Things happen in life, and you know you got to move on. Um, what I did was, I knew I wasn't going to stay at the school. My coach wanted me to come back. He's like, "Hey, you know, you're a very, very vital um, option on the team. We'd love to have you back." And my thing was, if you didn't play me, why would I come back? Right? And I brought up my bulletin board again, and I already had all my research done. And what I did was I took the phone and it's called like, hey, um, I'm actually looking to transfer. Um, are, are, do you guys have a player? Are you guys looking for a player in your position? And I just kept on making calls and calls and calls and calls. So I called this one school. It was called Owens Community uh, Owens Community Colleges up in Ohio. Um, I looked at their program. They sent two players to uh, the University of Miami and one guy to the University of Marshall. So I'm like, okay, man, these guys have a really reputable program. Let me call these guys. I called the coach, and he's just like, um, hey, we don't know yet, um, but we're still looking. Um, so I told my mom, because she, because at this point, school is being paid for. Um, so she doesn't want me to leave a good program, but she doesn't know the things that are happening behind the behind the door. Because I didn't tell my parents because I feel like. They're like they're just worrying for no reason. So I called I, I called the same school again. I said, "Hey guys, I would love to work out for you. Um, can you please uh, give me a workout?" And um, they're like, "Yes. Can you be here tomorrow?" Um, so I picked up my things from Missouri and I drove all the way to uh, Owens and I gave the coach a 15 minute workout. And at this time of the workout, I don't know if he liked me or if he's just cutting the workout short because he thinks I suck. So in 15 minutes, he cuts the thing. He's like, hey, just get changed. Um, just come to my office. And get, I got changed. He, he, then he had a paper in front of me. like, we'd love to be part of the team. And that was probably the best decision at that time that I've made in my life because now I'm at a school that, uh, like, a coach actually wants me, you know. And he kind of did everything for me. Um, he brought out college coaches, like NCAA coaches, um, for first practice. Um, he had so many links uh, with, like, with coaches uh, that was just so beneficial for me. And he just wanted me to, you know, to keep. He like he like he wanted me to like he we, he knew that where I can go, and he wanted he he wanted me to use for like he wanted me to be used for his program. So the more people that he sends out to the NCAA, he'll get a better job as well. So it's kind of like a win-win for both of us. Um, before my first game at, um, at Owens Community College, I had five offers to play NCAA basketball. Um, five schools um, that, I, that I thought I would never, you know, never go to. Um, at the end of the year, I had maybe 17 schools that had offered me um, Cleveland State, Missouri State, um, uh, Valparaiso, um, Ball State. Um, and I decided to go to a school called Ball State University. Um, that's where I committed to um, because that was the, that was the school that kind of wanted me. Um, they, they came to my house. They saw my family. They, um, you know, they talked to my brother. They they gave me a very homely, homely vibe. Um, and no other school did that. You know, no 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 other school flew out to Toronto and you know had a discussion with my parents or you know took me, took took my brother out to dinner or it was it was a very like hey man we want you to be here rather than hey uh um you know, uh, do you think you want to play for us? Like, like, no, we want you. So that, 
made me feel very, very comfortable. So that's why I chose Ball State University, which is in Indiana. Um, and it was, again, at that time, the best decision I made in my life, which I thought. Um, my first year, uh, I didn't play much. Uh, I started my first three games, and um, my first game ever, wa like walking into an NCAA game, was, we played at Utah State, um, which was against uh, Kyle Kuzma, uh, DeLon Wright, and uh, Jakob Portal, uh, who are three players that are in the NBA at this point. Um, there, the game was on ESPN. It was a top 25 team. They were ranked 18th in the country. And then you have, we're playing Ball State, which is a little mid-major school in Indiana. Um, sorry, one second. Uh, can you guys still hear me? Yep, we can still hear you. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. So playing against uh, playing against Utah State was was a huge thing because you know we, we as a kid we watched these kind of games we watched these big time games and it was on ESPN and I'm kind of nervous. Um, I didn't play well and we got slapped by maybe 20 points. Um, and that was a wake up call for me because I'm like, hey, like this is not. Uh, like this is this is not like junior college anymore. Like you know, like where I was like having like like 16, 17 points and grabbing like nine, ten rebounds. That now I I, I I I had a game where I had six points. You know, uh, maybe like four rebounds, and it was like a little like reality check. You know, and so my third by my third game, uh, I go for a rebound and I kind of just still land on someone's foot again it's like i just rolled my ankle very badly tore some ligaments and that was that was kind of my 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 third year in college so my first year i broke my nose my second year had a great great year and third year rolled my ankle um has like it was a very very bad rolled ankle and I don't know what to, to do at this point. So what I'm doing is I'm doing rehab, very extensive rehab where I'm doing, I'm missing class to do rehab three times a day. And I'm just, I just want my, my body to get back. And uh, so I come back mid season um, thinking everything is okay. Uh, I got cleared to play. I got cleared for, uh, for practice. Um, and my first practice back, Simply, I'm just running down the court and I rolled my ankle again um, and I was done. No one touched me. I didn't land on anybody. I was just simply just running and I just rolled my ankle um, because I tried to come back too fast um, and my foot wasn't strong enough um, and I was done for the year. Um, couldn't practice, couldn't play. And that was my third year of college. So I played a total of five games, maybe. Um, so now it's my senior year of college. Um, didn't play two years. Had a great, great uh, a second year. So I'm going to be like, hey, where am I? What am I going to do this season? Do I leave or do I come back? And uh, I decided to come back because I thought I can – I can play and I can, you know, I can, I can do something for my senior year. It's my last year. You know, I got to do something or, you know, I, 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 I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to go to the NBA. That's what I'm thinking. Right. I'm, I'm supposed to go here and I don't play much my senior year at all, to be honest. Um, what happened was um, when I got hurt, uh, they brought in players and they felt like those players you know, like they were just already in the, in the, in the system, you know, and the, and the coach trusted these players and, you know, it's very hard to kind of come back into that circle um, when you're injured, you know, um, that's why they say injury is such a risk because you don't know who else is going to come, you know, and take your spot um, because the game doesn't stop. Right. So you, they got to find, you know, ways to win. They got to find players. So that's what they did. Um, so where I was starting, I got hurt and now I'm slowly, slowly going down the line 
by this point, I'm kind of frustrated because I'm fine. I'm playing. I'm playing like I'm, I'm practicing. I can play, but I'm just not in that circle anymore. Um, so, you know, what I decided to do was I wasn't really like practicing much because they had so many guys on the practice um, on the practice team. Um, so and the only people that get repetition are those seven, eight guys that are that are, you know, that are playing. If you're nine, 10, 11 you're kind of just pretty much standing a lot of the practice, you know, you're not, you're not getting your reps up. So, you know, you don't know really know much, many of the plays, you know them, but you're not really going to the reps. Um, so what I decided to do, I went to the coach's office and I said, Hey, um, can you put me on the scout team? Um, the scout team is the, the team that you practice against. Um, these players consist of players that have, transferred from other schools that can't play that season um people that are hurt or people that are red shirting which means um they're not eligible to play they're, they can play next season they're not uh, eligible academically so you know um I, I decided to go to on the scout team and he didn't really like the idea but i i told him i wasn't getting my reps up so you know i need to be i need to be doing something and the scout team what they do is they study the team that they're playing against. So let's say Ball State is playing the University of North Carolina. So as a scout team, we're gonna look at North Carolina, and we're gonna we're gonna be a, we have a five guys, and we're gonna be like I'm gonna be playing the power forward of that team. So I gotta watch his tape and mimic his moves, so my team can get um, a realistic look on how the team is gonna be played. So we. We study their defense, we study their offensive plays, and we st we study that player's tendencies. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like acting, you know? So we play every Thursday and Saturday. So for Thursday's game, I have to act like a player on the other team that we're going to play. And, you know, it was it was kind of very, like, beneficial for my growth because I'm, I'm working on different, different skills. So because my player on Saturday might just sit down in the post and just, you know, he might just playing, be playing back to the basket. Saturday's game, this guy might be a guy that's just shoots threes. So I just got to be on the three-point line all practice, you know, like, so it was a very, it was very like good for my, 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 my IQ on how, you know, practice plans are like how players are like, so as, as I was playing those players, my great, my game was developing so much because I was becoming more and more versatile. Right. So that was my, my way. A lot of people don't like practice, but I started loving the, the, the preparation of practice. You know, I, I started, I started paying attention a lot to the details, you know, instead of, instead of just going, Hey guys, we have practice today, you know? Okay. I hope you don't run much, you know, for me, it's like, okay, man, I got to study this guy's tendencies. Okay. This guy only goes to his left hand, you know? So these, these details made me so like so much better. And at this point I'm, you know, my senior year is done and uh, I have nowhere to play. Um, I'm seeing my, my local, my, my, my fellow teammates, these guys are going off to, you know, playing in Spain, playing in France, uh, Turkish, Turkish league. And I can't, I don't have anywhere to go because I don't have any film. You know, I don't have any game tape on myself. I don't have like, I, 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 I averaged maybe one point in my senior year. So like, who's gonna, who's gonna take a player like that? Like, you know, like who's gonna, who's gonna, who, who's gonna take a player to average, who average one point a game. And what I did was um, I just started sending out my practice tapes. I made, uh, I made, I took all my film from practice from 240 days of practice. And I just sat there and I just made my tapes and started sending them out. Hey, this is what I can do offensively. This is what I can do defensively. This is how I do on a full court. This is what I do in a half court. And I just started making these little, little tapes and I just started sending them out, sending them out, sending them out. And I didn't get, I didn't really get much of um, an opportunity or anything like that. And I was going to just, you know, I, I, I end up going home. I, the best thing I got out of college was, Hey, at least my education was paid for. I didn't pay for school. 
Um, I got a degree in business management and a minor in marketing. Um, you know, I'm like, okay, at least I have a degree to fall back on, but that's what I never wanted to do. So my, my, uh, my, my thing for me from like, was to, I, I just wanted to play basketball. So I got a, I got a call, random email. I got a call and like, Hey, would you like to play three X three basketball? Uh, I, I didn't know what three X three basketball was. I didn't know. It was, I didn't even know it was real. Um, they're like, yeah, it's really big in Japan. Um, they have a league out there. Um, you know what? We would love to, we would love to, you know, kind of, uh, kind of have you. So I got, I got put into this draft board of, of, of the just random players uh, for three X two basketball for the league. So another, I got, I got another call and it was an Indian guy in, from India. His name is Roy Bakshi. Um, he calls me and he says, Hey, I, I'm Indian. Um, we're putting an Indian team together. Um, would you want to like, we're going to draft you. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm like, Oh, all right. Very cool. Okay. Mm-hmm. I don't really know what this is, but you know, I just want to, I just want to play, you know, he's like, yeah, you know, it, 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 it's a great league. It's not much money, but you know, it, 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 you know, it could get you somewhere. I said, um, okay, man, just like, I'll take the opportunity. Cause that's the only one I had at the time. So I said, I was, I would love to do it. Um, flew out to Japan, started playing three X three basketball. My first game was a disaster because uh, I thought it was something different, which it wasn't. Um, I should have done my homework, but I, but I didn't even like, there's no, no tape or anything to look at at the time. Cause it was very, it was very like very new. Um, so I started playing for this team called ugly Mina and it was four Indian guys in the team. One guy from uh, two guys from India, one guy from the uh, States from Seattle and there was me. Um, so we play this, we're playing this three extra league and we don't really know what to expect. So as we're, we're winning games, but now they're saying, Oh, since you've won, you're, you're playing in this FIBA world tour. We're like, Oh, okay. Very cool. At this point, this is a very, very big deal because, um, like playing. So there's, you're playing for, for four Indian guys playing for a Japanese team. And Japan has never qualified to play in the world tour in, in basketball history. Um, so we're playing and, you know, we go through the first world tour. We, 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 we place fifth out of 12 teams. Um, we're, we're playing. All right. Okay. This is, this is a very new format. Um, we ended up winning the league in, in, um, in Japan, our first year in 2016. Um, so now I get an opportunity to play for five on five Japan. There's just, because now since I'm in the, in the country, um, a lot of people are looking at me and my goal was to always play five on five. So I got a call from this team called Kagoshima Rebanize. Um, it's on the West side of, uh, of Japan. And they said, Hey, we would love to have you. Um, and that's, that's exactly what I wanted to do. So that, that was playing. I, I was playing five on five and then in the summertime i was playing three x three so from 2016 to 2018 i didn't go home not for christmas not for new year's i was i was just so dedicated on you know just trying to make it just trying to establish myself in the basketball circle and you know like that's what i was doing for two years so i played two years of five on five and i and i was playing 3x3 in the summertime so i was playing from november to may five on five and then from june to basically november so all year round i was just playing basketball and i was in the best shape of my life because i was always playing um at that point my second year playing five on five and 3x3 i had to make a choice because it just wasn't sustainable um i couldn't go home because i was playing all year round and it was just too much load on my body so I knew I had to pick one um, and that decided to be three X three. I just gave up playing five on five because I just fell in love with the game. Um, I was, you know, I was, uh, I was a bigger kind of hot commodity in three X three. I was, uh, you know, the, I was getting paid more. So there's a lot of factors that went in um, into my decision, but I just strictly just, you know, just started playing three X three. and. Um, um, 
FIBA, which is the uh, International Federation of Basketball um, Association, that uh, other than the NBA, these guys are the are the guys that control like basketball globally. So they came to my teammate Rohit Bakshi, and he, they said, "What are you guys doing in Japan? You guys are four Indian guys. You guys have won the league in Japan twice. What are you guys doing in Japan? Do whatever you guys are doing, but do it for your country." And what that meant was, there's such a big um, basketball like uh, community in India, but it just wasn't tapped yet. You know, China had like the NBA had already gone into China, and the NBA didn't come to India just yet. So they knew like that was the market of basketball that they wanted to tap next. So they wanted us to do something in India. So they started. They helped us start a league um, in in India called the Three BL, which is. Um, we are in our third season or third season now. Um, but FIBA helped, you know, with all that. Um, my teammate at that time was Roy Bakshi. He quit and he became the commissioner of this league. So um, it's kind of cool to see him do that. And, you know, for us to now where we're playing Japan, now we're playing in India, you know. So now all these world tours are happening and I'm, I'm getting to see a lot of the world as well. You know, I, I, I played in um, Abu Dhabi. I played in Dubai. I played in Mongolia. I played in um, Japan, uh, Thailand, um, Prague, uh, London, Puerto Rico. Um, there's a lot of places that the, the sport of basketball has taken me where I probably didn't even dream of going. I would, I would never go to Mongolia, to be honest. I would never, I would never be like, hey, guys, let's pack up our bags. Let's go to Mongolia. Like, that would never, ever, have ever crossed my mind. But, you know, a little orange basketball, you know, it took me places where I never thought I could go, you know. So I got to see a lot of the world, which was, a, it's, it's one of my favorite things to do at this point because I feel like I've, the person that I am is all through a lot of travel. I got, I've seen a lot of, a lot of things um, in my life through the, through travel. Um, and it got me to, you know, places like, um, like I never thought I'd be playing in India. You know, um, my, my parents came from India to Canada to give me a better life. You know, um, why would I, why would I go back to India to make a living? You know, so they, they didn't really agree with my, my decision because they know what India was. They know what it's like, but I found it, uh, it you know, maybe there's an opportunity to, to, to do something special. And, and that's what it was. Um, you know, I was, uh, I was very excited to, 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 to start that journey. And with that journey became um, uh, a lot of things. I got to play for Team Canada um, for 3x3. I represent Team Canada in the World Cup qualifiers um, um, in the uh, America Cup this past November. Uh, I'm actually going to um, the Commonwealth Games in Birmingham uh, in, Ju in July, on July 28th. Um, so... You know, playing for Team Canada, I never thought a, a person like me would um, would play for Team Canada, you know, the, the way I look and stuff like that. So um, basketball for me has been a great journey. Um, it has taken me places where I never thought I'd go. And it's it, it, it opened doors for me where I, uh, with people that I never thought I would be sitting in the same circle. You know, um, I'm on the phone with people where I thought I would never be with, like, you know, like. Um, so basketball has done a lot for me in my life and I owe a lot to the game. Um, that's why, you know, a lot of people, you know, they like to cheat their workouts or, you know, um, yeah, yeah, I'm in the gym for like 10 minutes. Um, but like, let me just get in like, 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 you know, like two less reps. Um, but like, I don't like cheating game because my motto, which my coach has always said to me and I pass it on to everybody else is, if you stay true to the game, the game will stay true to you. So, you know, there's a lot of things that happen in life, but the game will always somehow, you know, it'll always be true. Um, it'll always give you your fruit of, of, of your hard work. So um, um, I'm kind of grateful to be in the position I am um, to, to this point, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm playing, uh, I, I'm mentoring kids. Uh, I'm trying to start a whole new basketball culture in India um, and just kind of just now just passing on my knowledge and kind of just helping kids um, trying to get to their goals uh, just with my local uh, rep team just, just trying to help them 
and just kind of passing my knowledge because at the end of the day, I can't take it with me, right? Um, at the end of the day, I'm I'm, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna I'm uh, I'm after I'm, I'm I pass away, like my knowledge doesn't go with me. So I'd rather pass it on and kind of help people along the way. And that's kind of where I'm at in my life right now. And uh, the crazy thing is, there's a lot more to come. So you know, uh, I hope you guys stay tuned in my journey. But um, for me, that's that's uh, that's that's everything for today. And